Hi all. In uh, this video, I wanted to share a way to do JPEG movies in the browser. It's not very efficient in terms of bandwidth or CPU usage, but it's cool nevertheless. And there's what it looks like. Okay. It's images flipping the browser with minimal HTML. That's the markup, as you can see it down here. And behind the scenes, this is a Python app running over here, serving this HTML page and the image itself. To serve the JPEG, it loops over a folder of images and sends each image as the, the new data for the image that's being shown here in this image tag. Uh, and that's made possible because of an HTTP protocol feature called multi-part, specifically multi-part X mixed replace. It's pretty neat. Basically, like I said in the opening, it tells the browser, hey, replace this JPEG that you requested with this new data. And that's what it does. So let's first show, before I start talking about how it's done, we got to lay some groundwork. So let's talk about what a normal HTTP request looks like. So let me open this. All right, so in a normal HTTP request, this is bare bones, basically as simple as you can get. We send this to a web server. This is what your browser does behind the scenes in the you know, simplest fashion. So get method, this is the path we want using HTTP, HTTP 1.1 protocol. And this is the host that I want you to give me that page from. Right now we're just serving it from localhost running on 8080. So if we do that, this is what the web server sends back. HTTP, it's talking 1.0, 200 status OK. It tells us what the server was. And right now it's a Python base HTTP server, which I'm using the built-in HTTP uh, daemon stuff that you know, comes with Python 3. It sends you a date for the content and the content type, which is text HTML. And here's the markup that I showed you right here and in that page. Okay. Uh, actually, I'll stop that because we're going to change something. So that's a simple page, right? But what about a multi-part response body. Let's change one thing so we can, so it's a little more human readable. I'll get rid of the image bytes and just show, show it a, a text-based multi-part. That should work. Nope, let's see. Ah, uh, there we go. All right, we are reading this file, piping it to netcat. Netcat just opens a TCP connection on this host and port and shows us the response. That's not what I wanted. I forgot to restart. Here we go. Sorry about that. We've all been there. Okay, so simple request here, get, but now we're getting an image path. And over here, this is what the server is sending back. That's all familiar. And here, in this case, we're doing the content type. Before was text HTML that the server was giving back. But this time, uh, the Python, we're doing something different because we want to send back a multi-part response body. So the server is saying, hey, this, this content is going to be a multi-part mixed replace. And the boundary, the boundary is how we do multi-part. As you can see, the boundary text shows up here again. It tells the browser, when you see this string, you know we're about to send you some new data. And in the HTTP protocol, you have to prefix it like in the body part of the response. This is the header part of the HTTP response from the web server. And after this blank line that follows the headers, the um, so, okay, <laughs> you send headers, or the server, web server sends headers, and then it sends a blank line, and that tells the browser, all right, we're done with headers, now on to the actual body response for the request. All right, <laughs> sorry about that. So the this tells the browser, here's a new multi-part. 
And we can again do headers here, content type. This data is going to be JPEG data and it's 11 bytes long. And then again, here's the new line that sign signals the end of the header section and the beginning of the actual data payload section. In this case, we're not sending JPEG data because I wanted to make this uh, human readable and you know so we can talk through what the protocol looks like. But my Python basically is just sending hi there zero for the, the first iteration, waiting a second, sending another multi-part boundary, hi there one, and forever. I just wanted to give you a visual of what the multi-part um, response body looks like. Um, normally this, of course, once we switch it back to actual JPEG data, this is going to be a bunch of bytes like we saw before when I made a mistake. So I'll stop that. We will, I think I'm going to start walking through the Python code now. Get rid of this, put that down there. Come on, there we go. Okay. All right, here's the Python code that actually makes this work. Um, the main entry point is down here where we create uh, an HTTP server. We're using the Python's built-in threading HTTP server. And like this comment says, we need the threaded version so that way each request that comes in gets its own thread so that it can be handled. Otherwise, the first request that would come in would get picked up and we'd block this main program thread and we'd only ever serve that one request because in order to do a multi-part um, JPEG streaming setup that we're doing, we have to keep this socket alive. So when our code receives a request for the JPEG, we just keep looping, sleeping, and sending new image binary data. So we keep that socket open. And by default, Python apps are single threaded, so we have to use the threaded version to make sure we can serve more than one at a time. Okay, make a threaded HTTP server. It's bound on port 8080, which means that's where it listens for requests on. And then for each request, it actually uses this request handler class. So, okay, we have our web server and here's the simple part where it serves slash or request for index.html. This is equivalent in our web server. And all it really does is send a 200 okay response tells the browser this is going to be HTML, ends the headers, reads the index.html file in uh, binary mode, and writes that out to the browser, and then closes and we're done. Okay, so that's simple for the actual web page itself. Before I get to the other stuff, I want to do, show some other boilerplate that's necessary. Since we're dealing with threads and since we're dealing with an HTTP server that just keeps serving requests and waiting for new ones, we need to catch some signals. We want to make sure that we can close our Python app if someone hits control C on their terminal and maybe they want to stop it. So this is how we do that. We catch these signals, interrupt and terminate, and we set our running flag to false. And then we tell the HTTP server to close. And this stops handling current requests and stops the listener that, you know, so it no longer listens for new ones. All right, that's a little more boilerplate. We got one more thing to talk about. In order to serve a bunch of image data, what I do is I loop over images in a folder, look for the ones that are JPEGs or PNGs over here, open them in with Pillow. It's an image manipulation and conversion library module that you know is available for Python. It works really well. We open them. We're actually going to convert them to JPEG. Right now, my folder actually is a folder of PNGs. So I'm converting them to JPEGs. And in order to do that, you save them into this bytes IO object and then get the value, which ends up being like a list of bytes or a byte array in Python. And then appending that images, J, like JPEG encoded bytes onto this list of images. So the first one would be the JPEG encoded bytes, bytes for image one. The next item in the list would be the JPEG encoded bytes for image two, et cetera. However many images are in the folder. 
Okay, now we have our images list. Let's talk about serving that data. And this is where I'm going to bring up this. That is not what I wanted to do. Oh, I'll get you out of here. Thanks. Let's start from the beginning, just so you can see the opener. There it is. Okay. So we're going to serve streaming.jpg. In our code, we set whatever boundary string we're going to use. And here's the response we send initially or immediately that says, Hey, I'm about to send you some multi-part data and here's the boundary string I'm going to use. As you can see, that's over here, right there. And then we end our headers, which gives us that blank line. And then we start looping over. Well, while we're supposed to be running again, I check that flag, that global running flag. And then we start looping over the images. And immediately here I check running again, because if I only had running the running check was at this outer loop, it would never check it until it had looped through all the images and tried to send them. So I just want to exit quickly. So I'll check it right here at the, at the top of every image loop iteration. All right. And here's the string that I had changed so we could do some human readable debugging that, you know, that prints out the high there stuff. So we have image data in the IMG variable, and then we're going to write the multi-part boundary. We have to convert it to a byte array and then write it over the socket to the browser. So I'm declaring this string with a string interpolation. It shoves the boundary, which is up here at this location and prints a carriage return new line, which gives us, you know, like this part from there to there. And then we print the content type header and the content length, as you can see. And then over here, I have that blank line that signals to the browser. Hey, we're done with headers. I have one extra carriage return new line there. And then we write the actual image byte data itself flush it for good, good measure, just to make sure the OS didn't buffer anything or that Python didn't buffer anything. We want the uh, JPEG frame to get to the browser as soon as possible. And of course, this is all wrapped in a try because if the browser closes the tab, then that socket will get closed and we'll be attempting to write to a socket that can no longer be written to. So we have to catch those instances. And then we wait, currently we wait a, for a second. And then we go back up here and loop over the next image. And when we get to the end of those, that image list, we check running and then start again. So I'll start it up. And open it. And there we go. So let's change this to be, again, this is all server side. The server is the one that is waiting sleeping for some amount of time and then sending the next data. So I can send it more quickly if I want to, or even more quickly if I wanted to. And that's it. So, but keep in mind that we are sending full JPEGs. Um, so they consume much more bandwidth than a video would. And if you try to send large images quickly, sometimes you'll be sending the next one before the browser has actually decoded and shown it on the screen. So you may not see some images show up or they may flip very quickly. So there are, are some downfalls. It's not, you know, the ultimate solution, but it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, let's see some other things. If I did not specify the width here, What's neat is if I'm sending um, <clears throat> JPEG data for images of different sizes, the browser will not try to put them all the same size. Pardon me while I get a drink. So what I mean is if like the first image is 200 wide and the next image is 600 wide, you'll see a 200 wide image and then immediately a 600 wide image. 
So the browser doesn't try to fit them all or you know, fit them all into the same sized image tag or anything. So if I, if I take this away, um, if I took it away and it had different sized images, you'd see that. So yeah, that's it. Sorry for that digression near the end, but um, this is a pretty handy thing to do if you have image data from some daemon and you want to visualize it in some way in the browser without uh, having to encode a video like into MP4 or something and then figuring out how to get to the browser. If you, if you have image data, convert it to JPEG and send it to an image tag in some markup. And it's a really easy way to do like a live stream or a live view of what you're processing on the back end. Super handy for something like a Raspberry Pi surveillance or security camera. Yeah, that's another one of my projects. So that's how I learned this. Okay. Thanks for watching and take care.